Okay, so we'll start the meeting. Uh, welcome, the Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Regular meeting agenda. Today's June 4th, 2024. It's 11.05 and a half a.m. And we're at the Golden Court Community Room. We're going to have, okay, so the first on the agenda is topics not reasonably anticipated, 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Uh, so the first thing is uh, our executive director is delayed. She's working on a situation. And so we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the agenda, but some things might be out of order. Uh, we're also going to add a topic uh, that I just found out about that has to do with our cat and um, uh, our executive director Pamela Rogers will address that when she arrives uh, so the first thing on the agenda after that unless you all have any other topics not reasonably anticipated no I am okay um, so we're the first will be approval of the minutes so the minutes, the first minutes we will work on approving is Tuesday, April 9th. Mm -hmm. And um, can I get a motion? I'll make the motion we approve. Sue, would you like to second? First second. Uh, discussion? Um. Sue, first. And then we'll, we'll do what I have introduced. We'll, I'll start at my left and then every person at least once if not twice if not three times will get a chance to ask questions and comments. Yes, on page three of the April 9th, 2024 minutes, um, administration fee for project 117082. Where are you at on the page? Um, the very bottom, bottom. paragraph. Bottom. Oh, bottom paragraph. Okay, I see. It mm -hmm. says administration fee for project number 117082. Pamela Rogers explained that this is the first time we are being asked to do this, which has to do with the um, keeping 10% above the contract amount, which is going to Amherst Housing. Well, the, when the first time, uh, how did this come about? I wanted to know more. What, if it's the first time, was it something that was discussed with uh, uh, DHCD, or was it something that was discussed in contracts? Okay, because so it talks about the first time this is happening. Okay, I'd like to know more, a little bit more clarity. Did on. you? Because we're approving minutes right, right now, but that's what I'm saying. So, do you want me to add that to? I want to add that to. Items for future agenda. Right. Uh, explanation of uh, administrative fee. Yes. Not 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 the fact that they're allowed to have ten percent above the contract amount, but just the fact that it's the first time. In other words, who initiated this first time? Is it did it come from the governor's office? Did it come from uh, DHCD? I mean, where did it? I think she already explained that. Well, that I'm not clear about, and I'd like to. Okay, so read, read through that. This is, they're implementing new guidelines. It says right there. Right. And we had to fill out a form. She says right there. But in other words, is this something that's across the board in Massachusetts? Anybody? Well, that was my understanding. That's that what was, I wanted to know. Yeah. My understanding. Yeah, this is a new thing. It's that, not just Hadley that has to vote. No, money. it's Executive Office for Housing and Livable Communities. This is a new rule and reg that came out with. Yes, yeah, so are we going to be seeing this new rule and regs? Are going to be written? That, that I, I don't can I see this everything comes out eventually on public housing administration notices but we're digressing away from do you have any corrections or additions or anything like that Just the, the fact that um, housing authority management is certified under Mass Narrow, yes. and um, administrator certificates, seven courses. Is this something that's new? Also, as I no. wanted to know, 
No. But they have to be Well, I can, I, that's a, again an a agenda right. topic, but I believe um, that's been around for quite some time and some executive directors will get their housing, they'll get themselves and their housing authority staff certified in their area of expertise. But I mean, I just want to give you a quick answer so we don't have to right. add this to a future agenda, but that's not approval of the minutes. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the minutes of Tuesday, April 9th? Sue? here making sure I didn't, I'm looking at my notes no I guess we're all set okay um, so rich I'll I'll come to you after I have my little correction thing so Pam on the first sentence under regular meeting uh, open the, it says open the vote, it should say meeting. For, are we on page one? April 9th, right under regular meeting call to order, the first sentence, it should say open the meeting instead of open the vote. Okay. There's a couple of other, like, misspellings or whatever it, it's not worth going to it's very understandable uh, so on page three down at the bottom it says and this is just a transcription kind of thing so the third line from the bottom it says for additional expenses that the housing authority it says occurs it should say say incurs Not that it, I think most everybody would understand what it really said. In the middle of the page on page four, um, let's see, it says the management agreement does not cover director of facilities, CPA grants, things of that, doesn't cover food. Sue Oppenheimer, it says Sue Oppenheimer aid, it should say said. And I, I think most people could figure that out when they read it, but. And then, um, let's see, I didn't number these paragraphs, but, okay, so about three quarters of the way down, it says Pamela Rogers explained that, so we earmark this towards a new fee, it should read vehicle, and at the end of that paragraph, it should also say towards a new vehicle instead of towards a new fee. Everything else is just silly stuff. So. Okay, that's all I have. Rich? That should be all separate. Okay. Sue? Nothing yeah, more. Further? I have nothing more. Rich? Nothing okay. more? Okay. So I'll call for the vote. I approve. Right. Okay, and I approve. Okay. Three to zero. The minutes of Tuesday, April 9th, Okay, so now we're on to the minutes from Tuesday, April 30th. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion. Sue, would you like to second? I will second. Discussion? Sue. I'm looking at my notes right here. Possibly new housing for seniors in Hadley. It's, uh, it's I'm sorry, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Or under board, board card correspondence. Okay, what page? Page number three, three, saying that Pam and I have been invited by Housing and Economic Development Committee 
two purposes, to present new rules and regs coming out of the state, mm -hmm. it creates a pathway, and then possibly creating new housing. Mm -hmm. will, will you keep us apprised of how, as a board, of what's transpiring with this? Well, yeah, this is all in your public housing administrative notices, but uh, this is specifically to approve minutes. So if you need, right. if, if, if you want, uh, I cannot explain everything to you during approval of minutes. Right. If you want me to add it for I want to add it to Okay, housing, I'm going to put in housing initiatives. And give us more detail on that. Yeah, on yeah. Road. Anything else? Nothing else. And by the way, there was nothing in here about forming a group. I don't know where you came up with that, so. but whatever. Um, I have nothing on these. No, I Rich. have nothing. No. Nothing oh. more than I'll call for the vote. Approve. Approve. Approved. Okay, so that's three to zero for approval of the minutes from April 30th, 2024. Now, um, uh, Pamela Rogers has not yet arrived, so we can go ahead and do the warrant report. Rich, would you like to present? The warrant report. Uh, a common bill transaction between 4424 and 4424. And the looked, amount? Uh, everybody looked it over? Yeah. Yes. So you make a motion? Uh, make a motion to approve the amount of, I believe, total report, 18,000. Now for that 4 4, it's 23. Oh, what's that? It's 23,000. See down there? I'm not. Where are we? Here it goes. Right. The second page. Oh, I got it right here. 20,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 62 and 77 cents. That's it. Uh, do I get a second? Second. <laughs> okay, discussion. Sue? No discussion. No discussion. And I have no discussion either. Do I need to go around again? Sue has nothing. Rich has nothing. I have nothing. I'll call for the vote. Approved. Approved. Uh, approval of the warrant report for 4-4-2024 uh, is approved 3 to 0. Rich. Uh, the warrant uh, account bill transaction between 418.24 and 418.24. In the so amount of. Oh, oh, this is the one that was uh, $18,539.66. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, discussion, Sue? No discussion. I have no discussion, Rich. Right here. All right. Uh, then I'll call for the vote. Okay. Rope. I approve. Approved. We approve. Okay. So uh, the motion carries for for, for the warrant report for 418 2024 in the amount of $18,539.66. Moving right along to Treasurer's report. This is not a votable report. Rich, would you like to present? On the Treasury report, have, have you looked at it? Yes. Are there any questions? Yes. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. I want, under modernization, funds paid, not reimbursed, reimbursement received, not paid. Can, that whole little paragraph there, can you explain that a little bit more? Rich, yeah. would you like me to explain that? You better explain yeah. that. Yes. I think we talked about that the last meeting. So uh, we have received reimbursements for various modernization projects from the state and as of april 30th those monies have not be, been paid out okay uh, then we have modern admin received but not paid and those are zero okay so the reimbursement is do i have that kind of right pam i'm going to ask you uh, okay can't tell you that. Then let's early. set this aside and we will ask Pamela when she gets here. She should be here any minute. Any minute, yeah. Um, okay. And also with that is the monthly income and expenses is also part of the treasurer's report. Maybe we can get through this. Sue, do you have any questions? No, I don't. I have no questions. No questions. No. All right, then we're okay with that. 
portion, I'm going to set it right next to the, in case you come up with anything, uh, right any of us come up with anything else. Uh, okay. Now the, um, there's a, we're going to take things out of order and that will be the capital or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, unit vacancy report. Yeah, okay. Sue? Find the paper. It's right in back of that treasury report. There you go. As of 5-17-2024, 6 6 which is the senior part of Golden Court, has four apartments that are vacant. There was five, but we just had somebody recently move in. And 705 Burks Way, which is the family unit, has two vacancies. Okay, so I'm going to just say that as of 5-17-2024, according to this report, there were five vacancies. But we just know that someone moved in. Otherwise, we wouldn't, uh, mm -hmm. to the 667. So otherwise, we would still have five vacancies. And uh, do you want to make comments about the other four units being under capital? Yeah, no, you, you can do that. You okay, so we have four units at Golden Core that are under capital improvement and two at Burke Way that are under capital improvement. So a total of six apartments that are under capital improvement. They cannot be rented out until that work is complete. So that's why we have vacancies right now. Okay. Yeah. So that is not a votable. Okay. So the next thing is the tenant accounts receivable. I'll go ahead and do that. So uh, as of, this is for April, because we're actually, this is our May meeting that got delayed till today. So uh, the uh, tenants account receivable report is money that tenants owe us. And the subtotal for that money is $9,700 $98.41. I'm looking to see, because uh, in April, uh, we, we voted for a write-off, and that is reflected in here. So see, on the 667s, we had $10,833.62 written off in April. We did that at, I believe it was the April 30th meeting, might have been April 9th. But, um, and we do write-offs if someone has moved out, if they've passed away or moved out to a nursing home or, um, and we, we can't collect that money. There's, there's no way, so, so the state has given us a way um, to write off that amount because it really is uncollectible. There's other, um, there's other money owed that is collectible and we're empowering hey pamela's here welcome so sorry uh no it's okay work is work situations are situations so um we're on tenants account receivable and i think we're probably pretty much done with it this is not a votable report but sue do you have any questions once something is written off can it ever be opened up again and you know, some of the procedure where you go after money at a further date. So we write off. So when we do write it off, we do actually continue to go after it. It's just that it comes off of this part of the books and it goes um, goes into collectibles. So it comes in, um, it comes out of tenant accounts receivable and goes into another upline item. But we absolutely still work it to recover the money. And my other question is: there a statute of limitations on going after? Rent. I mean, in other words, it does. Is it like a seven-year statute of limitation, or is it continual? You can go after rent continuously till you get, hopefully, get rent from a tenant. Is there? A, I have to tell you, I don't know that. I don't know that answer, but I will get that for you and get back to you on that. It's a good question. Do you have any more questions, Sue? No questions. I have no questions. Not All right. I go back to. Uh, the part we missed with her. Yeah, that's what we're going to yeah. do now. Okay. Okay, so we got all the way down to 
through tenant's account receivable, except for we uh, soon have some questions on the treasurer's report. Okay. So, do you need a minute? Because we can go ahead and do work orders. Yes, you will. Okay. Yeah. So let's do work orders. Rich, do you want to do work orders or do you want me to do work orders? Oh yeah, do it. Look at them, right? You look yeah, at them. Okay. Have you looked at the work them? orders? Or it's not a votable report. So, Sue, do you have any questions about work orders? No questions. I don't either. Rich? I'm just looking over it quickly right here. Yeah. I'll just say that the the requests are being, you know, the tenant generated requests are being completed pretty darn quick. What? I'm looking at the date it was requested and the date the work was completed and it's so fast. The, uh, some of them it looks like it's a little slower because they have, um, you know, if it, if it was reported on a Friday, they're not going to get there to fix it until the Thursday, which is the day. But so things are getting fixed really fast, according to um, our, uh, you know, the way that you've got maintenance organized. It looks very organized here. Yeah. Thank you. And things are getting done. It's wonderful. Okay. Sue, any any questions? No questions. I have nothing more. Nothing here. No. Rich. Okay. Um, I'm all set, yeah. You're all set? Okay, so the treasurer's report suit. You have some questions. Where are we here? Treasurer's report? Oh, just under, uh, under modernization on the first page, April 30th, 2024. Um, I just wonder why it funds paid and not reimbursed, reimbursed, received, and not paid, and, and modernization, administrative received, not paid. Under what, why is that under? modernization that would be any of the capital money that we receive um so if we would it for for a project if we paid out for that project like we are we have been paying out some designer fees and um architect fees or even abatement fees and we haven't been reimbursed yet from um eohlc okay so that's why you're seeing it that way so the way it was written that's why i was yeah. trying to figure mm -hmm. out Okay. It's like, you're right. I mean, there are so many of these things that have a backstory, and it looks weird unless you know the backstory. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I can understand a big project, like a window project, being considered modernization, but I didn't know if you were putting new vanities in it. No, that was considered modernization. No, no. Also. The windows is we modernize the windows, right. and they're gorgeous. So that's actually a good, another good point too. Is that so? Lots of times we do capital capital modernization stuff in house, but when it falls under that modernization account, that's when it's truly just coming from that capital money, that that other pool of money outside of our budget. So that's where you see that state way. stuff, state yeah, grant stuff, all right, stuff like that. Do you have any further questions? I just like, do we do um, five nine twenty twenty? Do we do this page yet? That's the only one that I'm still holding in my hand. No, okay. no, that's the that uh, Pamela's going to get that. So you don't have anything more on the treasurer's report, which also includes the monthly income and expenses. Yeah. Rich, anything? Nothing. I have nothing. Pamela, so we're down to uh, capital report now. Like I see great without me. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> so the. Uh, we're to this part of the capital report. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why we have that in there, but so um, that's nothing. That looks like it's a it's an old thing. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, that's so. Just for capital, the only thing I have is actually I think that's part of the treasurer's report because we have. I think that's what it is. So it's just yeah. part of the treasurer's report. There's nothing new or different. So the next thing was was our topics not reasonably anticipated that has to do with our cap. Yes, in our chimney project. And that will be a votable item, right? It is. So we yes. need to listen up because we just found out about that this morning. Yes. Um, yes. So I found out, so I, I was um, kind of sort of but not really on a staycation last week. Um, 
but I found out late in the week that our chimney project, so we had a pre-construction meeting. Um, you folks had awarded the project to a local, um, I think they were right out of Amherst. Uh, have, may, uh, are they have Okay, because I got different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, great quote, great, great company, um, or great bid. They were going to be doing the chimneys in the, in the buildings. Um, and then after the pre-con meeting, the RCAT, which is the Regional Capital Assistance Team, uh, figured out or became aware of that they did not, it's on that date, they did not properly procure the bid. So RCAT did not. Our cat did not. So our cat did. Um, they put it in. Okay, let's see. The procurement of project one one seven zero eight four Arpa chimney repairs at Golden Court valued at night uh, requires advertisement of on jurisdiction website. We did combines. We did. In the central registry, we did, and posted on the Hadley Housing Authority website. We did. One of the requirements not met was an email to a minimum of three vendors to perform the work. He missed doing that. Marquette missed doing that. Um, we did get five bids. We had one person come and walk through, and we got five sealed bids. Um, and then and he canceled the project. I desperately tried to save the project um, because I think everyone did their due diligence and this was an unfortunate mistake and with five bids, clearly people understood that it was out there. Um, the Attorney General's office got involved <laughs> and I called Worcester Housing Authority which oversees the RCAP program for our area um, and unfortunately they're recommending recommending that we go, we do cancel the bid, uh, the contract, and rebid it. So it was an RCAP accident. So, but when an accident happens like that, is uh, <coughs> do the person who makes the mistake can reapply and hopefully not make that mistake again? Are they pushed out? No, of that? RCAP made the mistake. Yeah, it's not the contractor didn't make it, but no, they could absolutely everybody that applied before, um, which is why I did not read. Really um, the value because if they were sealed bids and I think it should stay sealed at Which this point. Is, at this point it has to stay sealed so we don't discuss it. Yeah. Um, what the bid, so to give him because he's at a disadvantage right now. Yeah. Because it's already been out there once. So it's very unfortunate. I'm not happy about it. Um, but this was not a housing authority mistake. No, no, I'm not happy about that. that. And what would you say what the letter stand for? Oh, oh. Regional Capital Assistance Team. So that was a program that um, EOHLC put into place many years ago um, where they, they were supposed to assist small housing authorities that didn't have capital teams to um, do, do small projects. Um, Hadley has a, a contract, Belchertown um, has a letter of understanding, and then when we had um, the prior director of facilities Amherst, we said, oh, you know, we'd like a little assistance. Yeah. Um, now that we have John Williams, I um, once he's fully up to speed, where mm -hmm. how we file everything, where everything mm -hmm. is. John came from our cat, and he was also a supervisor at um, another housing authority. So he he's used to capital projects. He's got a construction license. He's um, so he we're going to bypass our cat with your permission. I would love to in the future. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk about that later, but that's where this is going. It's to me, it's why um, hiring the most qualified and experienced staff is a benefit right. to all the housing authorities and management agreements with with Amherst because it's just yeah. a benefit. Yeah, could you apply for CPA money to cover that project? instead of going the way that you just we could went. but I think CPA probably isn't going to get awarded until I the the, um, the request has to be in by the fall early fall I think no no it's it's August the 1st for the fall uh, the town meeting and for the special town meeting that occurs at the beginning of May 
the applications for CPA have to be in by February 1st. Oh, so you have two, there's two in? There's two. Oh, February yeah. 1st, we, we, we do two. February 1st, August the 1st, in some rare instances, they will take late applications, but again, then that money that's coming from the town, we may not get it for a while. That's the problem. CPA has to be done, you know, basically a year in advance of when you're going to need it. So. Right, and the town votes on it. So it's yeah. gonna, and I do plan on requesting some CPA funding for the door project that we yeah. have coming up here. So that'll, that'll We're gonna get new doors. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so. Okay, so we need to vote on something. Yep, so it, I need a motion to cancel the project. Um, one. What's to cancel the contract? Cancel the contract 117084. I move that we uh, cancel the project 117084, the ARPA chimney repairs. And go out to rebid. And go out to rebid. Second? I'll do the second. And then I'll, any further discussion? No discussion. Call for a vote. Unanimous at 3 0. Okay. Now we are done with everything. We're down to policy drafts. So I got to say, when I looked at the agenda today, we had had flower bed and common area draft. These are draft. We're not voting on the final policy because there's too many things we have to go through on this. So we're just looking at the common area policy today. We'll uh, pick up flower bed policy later, but this is going to be a meaty thing. Um, and I will also say we're going to, um, we might vote on various elements of it, but um, this has already gone through the tenant meeting. The tenant, I, I yeah. looked at, so you actually could if you, if you, oh, okay. if everybody was comfortable, you could vote on it. Okay, great. Because um, there's some housekeeping to be done on this. It's not in its final form. So the, the, at the tenant meeting, did they, did they have any comments? That yes, they did. And it was, it was incorporated into this. Except I found out we left a few of their things out. That's why I'm saying, oh, I didn't have that on my, I, I had it on my notes and, and somehow or another we didn't get it in this final draft kind of thing. Right. But so we had, I believe it was 12 or 13 tenants at the tenant meeting. That was at the time we had 35 occupied units. So whatever percentage, so we had like 33, a little more than 33% of the tenants showed up and and made comments and i have to say i was kind of surprised they overwhelmingly liked this they really did and in fact there were things that uh, that i was surprised that they said like uh, one of them was so on here it uh, it allows tenants to store tools in the back flower bed and one of the tenants made a comment, but tools can be used as weapons. They should be inside that the house. That was me. That was you? Yeah, and I took it, so that's why I took it out. <laughs> oh, it's not in here? No, I took oh, that okay, out. Oh, okay, great. Uh, so there was a, oh, so this is, this yeah. is the, okay, the one that was sent to me still had all my yellow highlights in it. For oh, removal. no, I took, yeah, I took, I You took them out, great, yeah. great, okay. So let's just go through this then. Um, so just as a history, Rich and I worked on this, God, what was it? Like, felt like a year. We worked on this a year. We used a, a template from a university for policies and procedures that might, if it works out well, Pamela, maybe we can use it going forward Absolutely. when we redo policies or revise policies. Um, so the purpose is prevention and mitigation of obstructions to prevent injuries and provide tenants, staff, guests, emergency service providers, vendors, and contractors safe, unhindered access to and use of common areas. Um, 
So the policy statement is tenants shall not obstruct any common area, nor shall they store items in common areas. And the common areas are the community building, porches, stoops, ramps, sidewalks, walkways, asphalt pads, clotheslines, lawns, flower beds, parking lots, and service driveways. All areas of the property outside the tenant's unit are common areas and the property of HHA. That's Hadley Housing Authority. Areas designated for Hadley Housing Authority staff use are not common areas and may not be accessed or used by tenants for any purpose. And then a list of those areas. Um, the policy is tenants shall not place ornaments, bird feeders, plant containers, furniture, or structures on lawns as doing so impedes lawn care operation. Operations creates a fall hazard and obstructs access. So I would take the chair. Yes, I think I would take bird feeders out there since we address it, I think, in line G. Okay. I so, that so I can remove that. So we've removed the bird feeder in 4A. So 4A1 is items on the lawn shall be removed immediately by the tenant. Uh, number two, uh, Roman numeral two is have the housing authority shall immediately remove and discard any item on the lawn and submit written notification to the tenant if identity is known. Uh, 4B is tenant shall not obstruct asphalt pads, parking lots, walkways, sidewalks, or clothesline areas with any item, including but not limited to pots, tools, containers, storage bins, shopping, or laundry carts. Roman numeral one, uh, Hadley Housing Authority shall submit written notice of violations to the tenant within three business days of reported violation. Roman numeral two, items obstructing common areas shall be removed within 72 hours of notification by Hadley Housing Authority. Items not removed shall be discarded by Hadley Housing Authority. Uh, Roman numeral, C, I'm, I'm sorry, um, 4C, closed lines are for use by any tenant. Roman numeral one, tenants hanging items on closed lines shall promptly remove items when dry, aired, or within 24 hours. Roman numeral two, Hadley Housing Authority shall submit written notice of violations to the tenant within three business days of a reported violation. Roman numeral three, tenants shall remove items obstructing within 24 hours of notification. Roman numeral four, items not removed within 24 hours shall be considered abandoned property and disposed of. Uh, 4D, tenant shall not store trash in common areas, including on or near porches or stoops. Tenant, uh, Roman numeral one, tenant shall remove household trash from their unit directly into the dumpsters provided. Roman numeral two, have the housing authority shall rip, submit written notice of violations to the tenant within three business days of a reported violation. Roman numeral three, trash shall be removed within 24 hours of notification. For E, tenants shall not discard furniture, mattresses, or appliances in or near the dumpsters or any common area. Again, a repeat of the 72 hours, three business days, removal by the tenant, items not removed shall be discarded. Uh, on that one, because it's furniture, trash, I mean furniture, mattresses, or appliances, the tenant shall pay for all disposal fees as well as hourly wages for staff and mileage to and from the disposal site. For F, tenants shall not place any food items in on common areas for the safety of all wildlife to prevent the invasion of vermin and pests into the buildings and for the health and safety of tenants and staff on the housing authority property. Uh, Roman number one, Hadley Housing Authority shall submit written notice of violations to the tenant within three business days of reported violation. Uh, Roman, I mean, I'm sorry, 4G, alcohol and drug use. Tenant shall not consume any beverage containing alcohol or use any drug legal or illegal in or on common areas of the uh, Housing Authority. We're gonna have a problem with this. Let's see, please. Tenants shall not be in an intoxicated state in or on common areas of the housing authority. Uh, Roman number one, written notice within three business days. Uh, Roman number two, repeated instances, requesting a temporary restraining order. Roman number three, continued abuse. We uh, will result in a notice to quit. Okay, um, I'm gonna star this for discussion, okay. H, bird feeders shall be maintained by the tenant who has installed them. 
removing seed from ground located a minimum of 20 feet away from the building and require written permission from the executive director. Uh, we have, a, it does say uh, seed bird feeder policy, that's rich, hate to tell you, but your next year here is gonna be helping me. We're gonna work together. Get the birds. Right? <laughs> Get the birds. <laughs> Get the birds. Okay. Uh, for I, tenant shall not affix electric lights or any electrical ornament or fixture, including extension cords in or on any common area or onto the exterior of buildings, doors, or windows. Battery operated decoration is permissible as long as it does not obstruct common areas and is not affixed with nail screw, screws or anything else that penetrates into the structure of the building door, door frames, brick, window, window frames, or eaves. Uh, uh, Roman numeral one, barred items shall be removed within 72 hours of notification by HHA. Uh, Roman numeral two, items not removed shall be discarded. The tenant shall pay for health disposal fees, et cetera. Uh, for J, tenant shall not attach ropes or awnings to the buildings, gutters, roofs, trees, shrubbery, or fencing. Uh, Roman numeral one, again, items shall be removed within 72 hours of notification. Roman numeral two, items not removed shall be discarded and tenants shall pay all disposal fees, et cetera. Okay, uh, 4K, tenants shall be allowed a small outdoor table and two outdoor chairs on the side of the front porch closest to the front door of their unit unless ramps limit the space. All porches are shared spaces, chairs, tables, or any other items must be placed within five bricks from the tenant's front door. However, in no case may any item obstruct a three foot wide straight path from the walkway onto the porch stoop and through the door. For L, tenant shall be allowed to place an entry rug on the floor of the porch and stoop at the front and back door. Uh, for M, tenants shall be permitted a small outdoor, wait a minute, okay. A small outdoor table and two outdoor chairs. Okay. Near the back door between the stoop and the bathroom window or within the back flower bed. Some units do not have this area available due to ramps or structural amenities. We should probably add that some units do not have this area available due to ramps and structural amenities on the one about the front table and chair, the front porch. I don't think we have it in there. Okay. It does say, unless plant ramps one of the space, but we probably should be more clear just quickly. Okay. For in, tenants shall be permitted to place potted plants on the small outdoor table allowed on the front porch and back porch. I'm gonna add porch there. However, in no, well, it's not even on the porch, so the front and back. In no case may any item is stuck a three foot wide straight path from the walkway onto the porch stoop and through the door. Uh, for O, tenants shall be permitted to maintain a garden in the front and back flower beds of the tenant's unit, if present, and or in the community garden behind the community building. And then in parens, CEPA report flower bed policy, which is, uh, which is in draft form, and uh, housing authority community garden policy, which is not yet written. So there's other policies that we're planning to do, egress, flower bed, community garden, wildlife, bird feeder, and, common, and the common space policy, which is what this is. So um, I would like to say that uh, we have two tenants on the board. We're both gardeners. Um, but when we serve on the board of commissioners, we have to look at policies in relation to what the legal and financial interests are of the housing authority. We got tenant input, the tenants overwhelmingly, I panel, you have the tenant meeting, and the tenants present overwhelmingly were enthusiastically in agreement with this and uh, even came up with a couple of <laughs> other things which are reflected in here now. Uh, so when we're sitting on the board as tenants, we have to put our tenant hat aside 
And we have to address things as commissioners without any looking at how it would affect, say, me personally. I'm an avid gardener. And some of these things in here, I have to go, it's in the best interest of the housing authority to have these in the policy, even though it might be an inconvenience to me because I love to garden and I love flower pots and I love this. But the job of a commissioner is to do what's in the best interest of the housing authority legally and financially. Sue, comment? I don't say I have to talk emotionally. I find it very restrictive. I find it I find it oppressive, and I find it much too long a policy. I feel this is something that, as I've mentioned before, that would be seen at a detention center and not a senior and disabled housing. I think that it needs to be looked at if it goes the way because of the vote with me and the fact that you two vote the same, I'm sure it's going to pass, and I think it has to be looked at by some sort of human rights commission, because I look at it as far as being very restrictive and against basic human rights. Okay, can I comment on that? So there, would, there, is, um, there is a mechanism once a policy is approved that if you have a, um, if you disagree with that, that you can write to DHCD and the policy in your disagreement goes to HLC. And they can they'll arbitrate that they'll they'll review it um, the other thing I want to point out is that this is very similar to housing to policies and other housing authorities but it's also very similar to most condo associations and the, their, their homeowners association I is understand. there's cut but, right but it's just the length of it alone is a, to me is oppressive well how you I'm using uh, 14 <laughs> type font that's where it goes on for pages but oppressive and but oppressive, oppressive and because of people because you're making it there's so many rules that people have to not enjoy their own space for fear that within 72 hours people are going to I, I do up. have to I find it that okay. personality wise we're different per, you know you're and well, of course I would never agree to something like this and I don't feel that DHCD necessarily, if they're the only person that can arbitrate something like that, I don't know that I would, I, I think there would have to be somebody else involved above and beyond along with DHCD. Because if this is how all the policies are going to be, pages and pages and pages, the thing is, I think that what you two are forgetting is we're disabled in elderly housing no and people are in their last like stages of life and they need, okay. they need to enjoy their they need to enjoy their spaces and not have pages and pages we already have a lot of rules I, I want to right. make sure that you have all your comments that you can think right. of right now do you have anything else to well, not about? now but I'm nauseous I'll tell you that yeah. hearing it is makes me want to jump out of my chair and and mm -hmm. yeah okay so now it's my turn and then we'll go to bridge so what I have to say about this is there's nothing in the common area policy that um, has anything to do with what a tenant should be allowed to have because the tenant does not rent the common area. This common area policy is primarily to protect other tenants from impediments and obstructions in the common areas. So for instance, the, uh, the common area is all the areas outside the inside of your unit, so or, or a tenant's unit. So a tenant is only renting the inside of their unit. They're not renting anything else. They have a lease only for the inside of their unit. And what has happened over the years is uh, sometimes tenants start storing things or keeping things outside of their apartment and it causes problems for staff, other tenants tripping over people's stuff that they've stored outside. We've had situations where people can't get through in their walkers or wheelchairs or they can't access the clothes lines or they can't because somebody is storing, say, blankets on the clotheslines uh, or leaving their laundry there for a month. Um, so, the, so none of this 
It is against any tenant. It's to make things safer for tenants, for staff, for EMS, for contractors, for, for our lawn maintenance people, our snow maintenance people, and we have to because when we're talking legal liability, if we don't, as a housing authority, empower the staff to protect our contractors, we're going to get sued. And that's where, where um, we have to act in the best interest of the housing authority to protect it legally and financially. So, so it is now Rich's turn. You know, I, I give you lots of respect, Sue, and now it's Rich's turn. There is nothing more Rich that I can say that you just did. Okay. And it's the protection of the, the tenant, you know. It's protection of the tenants. Is there a certain area that, that bothers you here that you don't like? It's just too lengthy, it's too restrictive, and it's not, it d doesn't address quality of life. It, it just, you're looking at the worst case scenarios. If somebody trips, if somebody falls, yes, all well and good. That's all valid points. But you need to have a policy that deals with quality of life also. And not just, you can't do this, you can't do that, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't. Because that's not the way people want to live in their senior and disabled years. So let me, uh, are you finished? I guess, well, right now, but. Okay, so we'll, we'll go around right. 12 times if we need to. <laughs> So are you, are you done for now? For now. Okay. So you say quality of life issue. I, I'm going to ask you a brief question. Just give me a sentence or two. What does that mean to you in relationship to the common area policy? Quality of life. Well, just counting even the number of pots or it's just too restrictive. It's like you could have some pots, not two pots. Or you want to, or... I mean, it's just, if you read through it, we could read through it line by line, and I would tell you what I object to. And the fact that I have lived here a long time, and so many and other tenants have, and also, I can't understand how somebody like <coughs> Richard, who is on our board, could relate to it, because he goes back to his house where nobody tells him how many flower pots and how many, so you're voting on something for people that you're not living that kind of lifestyle. Is what I'm saying. Do you, I didn't get a turn. Pam, right, it's a turn. Okay, so it's you're coming from a different place. In you get a turn. So, so I, I, I take umbrage with that because, again, I'm telling you that, that when somebody lives in a, where there's an HOA, they most certainly tell that. And then people living in their own homes have to follow the laws, the rules yeah. of the town. And we all as well. Are. And the no, HOA. No, is there's thing. rules yeah. and there's over rules. <laughs> no, so this is, this is just for clarification purposes. Right. So all the one, two, threes is the actions. That the, so that one, the tenant knows it, but it also give, puts the responsibility on the housing authority. So I do, as the executive director, get complaints from other tenants about how things look or how people are acting outside. And if I say, if we didn't have this in place, I would say, it for, just to use your example of how many pots, um, well, you know, and again, you're saying you're, you're a resident, Ms. Oppenheimer, you have too many pots out. Well, what's the definition of sum? Your sum is 12, my sum is four. So there's, this is defining it. And, and, I, and I can remember when my parents, elderly, living in senior condo, a, co a condo for 55 and older, that my mother got the letter in the mail saying, you have 12 gargoyles. <laughs> so 12 gargoyles out front, they gotta go. It's not allowed, it's too many. And she was deeply upset, I was thrilled. I don't like our coil, <laughs> um, but you have to have some kind of boundary. So it's not to be oppressive, it's to put everybody on the same page, the, 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 the same page. Um, there's absolutely issues with the, that this housing authority pays for lawn care and snow removal. We get charged you know, by the hour. So if they have to go around things, pick up things, mm -hmm. that's a problem. If a doorway is blocked for um, EMS. EMS or the fire department to go into a unit, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Just like the inside, it's very regulated on the inside through both the state sanitary code and through our 760 CMRs and our leases, you know, proper egress yeah. inside. Right. That's why we need to have this outside. I agree mm -hmm. that other air, the kind okay. of okay. Okay. Yes. okay, hold on. I really need to keep some decorum here. <laughs> you will get your opportunity. Okay. 
So Rich, you kind of got cut off. Do you have anything more no, for no. now? Okay. And okay. you're okay. I'm kind of so, curious about the, the alcohol. Well, you've got. I'm going to go ahead and skip to me because you've been talking a lot. Okay. <laughs> And then we're going to go around and get you again, okay? So let's go to that because I did circle that as an issue. Okay, alcohol and drug use. My concern is this now says tenants shall not consume any beverage containing alcohol or use any drug legal or illegal. Mm. Okay, so I remember you had said that the uh, police chief or some uh, law enforcement person told you it's still illegal to smoke pot in public. That's what they said. Jeez, but but they can't they can't smoke pot or vape pot inside their unit either. They may not. No. Okay, so this is saying that they can't vape or smoke pot anywhere on inside uh, inside their unit or anywhere on housing authority grounds. Right, so just go off the grounds. Go to the, the far area. Right, because I can't I can't tell you you can park so I was told by the police that when they came for a call that the, the smoking of marijuana, which I I thought that the new law was you can have there's a certain amount yeah. you can have Legal, if it's medicinal or okay. no, no, yeah, no. And, the, and even the medicinal is kind right. of like, you know, um, but it's at that, that that certain amount. So I assumed that that you could then smoke that in public, and the police officer, the Hadley police officer, who was here at the time for an incident, said, "No, you can't smoke it out in the open." I I don't I don't know, but we're saying no, you can't. Okay. He's, he said no. This is going to be a huge problem. <coughs> but this is a huge problem. This it is, is a, a huge, huge problem. problem here. But the people with medicinal marijuana. Then they can ingest it. Oh my. Okay. They, there's enough, because there is, this is a non-smoking facility. But that still won't make any sense. Because you say tenant shall not, okay, tenant shall not consume any or or use any drug legal or illegal that would include ingesting that's what I'm saying this language is not going to fly because I can I can understand them not vaping or smoking inside their units and I can understand that Hadley said Hadley PD says you can't even uh, smoke pot or anything outside your unit, Wait. even though you're on private property. Where is, what, uh, now I'm trying to find this. It's on page, oh, we don't have a page number here. G. Yeah, I'll, I'll add that. Up. It's G, 4G. Okay, so the problem is, is from the housing authority's perspective, it'd be a lot better if people would just use edibles for marijuana for... If, for they, if they have medical. So if they have a medical, then, then the, the a workaround for that is reasonable accommodation. Okay. They say my doctor says I have. I and need, I, I need this. to use this. Oh. So then, this you would be able to do that, but, but not, then you better not be. But not in a common area. You they can do it, but not in a common area. Is that what you're saying? Well, because because so we would. I would never give a reasonable accommodation for smoked. I just wouldn't because, because there's so many. It's medical, and there's other ways to take the medical. Right. Um, I shouldn't say that. I, I I have to have a lot of compelling evidence to give that. Um, if somebody is taking an ingestible through, of any kind of drug, I mean, if, if you're taking uh, oxycodone, I, I believe that can give you almost an intoxicated effect. It can, effect. yeah. That's, that's, that's a prescription, that's different. That's not, that's not okay. talking about that here. And I, I believe but, that would be the same it thing as- But is legal or illegal? I'm talking that's about language. marijuana, I'm talking about just the-, the It doesn't say that. That's the problem. This particular paragraph says any drug, including, it would include prescriptions because of the language here, legal or illegal. So do we want to put marijuana? Because, we're, I, I mean. I think we, we, we have to take this out for now, send it to legal, and work through this. And should it because really this is even, a problem. No, it's even, not. Wait, there's a work around. Maybe okay. the alcohol and drug use should not even be part of the common area. It should be a policy of its own. We might that's a big. That's a big. Otherwise, problem. you're 
it doesn't seem to no, be. No, because that's the other problem we've, we've dealt with with the police and, and multiple of the housing mm -hmm. authorities is that if we're not defining that, it, that the common area is not your rented space, then people can do whatever they want to do. But you can't have take that alcohol or that that marijuana and go onto the green and start drinking. Yeah, I think so. That, it's, it's open container. I think we need to look into this further. But I, I just I, see some problems coming with this. So, but that would it would be in a reasonable accommodation. I mean, if you want to take out, if you want to change the verbiage to um, using any drug. Um, Right, I mean, do you, I, it, it's, the problem with listing them all is saying, you. so you can't do heroin, you can't do Percocets, you can't do mushrooms, you can't, it, it's, it's, you can't do drugs. We're not talking, but you're not, you're not saying, uh, I mean, medical marijuana, yeah. you can get a medical marijuana card, but you're not going to find a doctor prescribing medical marijuana. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, it's really difficult. No, but I get reasonable accommodations that people say I have medical marijuana. Right. And then I would approve, I would approve that. Okay, that but would, not smoking, only not smoking. Yeah, not smoking. smoking. Uh, and not vaping. Correct. Okay. Because that's against the, the, the not smoking policy. But even people who are on a you know ADHD or ADD drugs, we're not to speak. We're not talking about So I mean that's, that's a drug that's a that's a controlled that. substance. I know. So if you have to that's why we're getting saying, into the way a, this is written. I mean the way right. this is right, written. So what about what about somebody that's just buying somebody's ADHD right That's right. illegal. That's but illegal. It's still, but it's still a legal drug. But uh, that's what I'm saying. We need to do something with this language because it's not a. It's going to cause us problems. I think legal problems because we say legal or illegal, and you're trying to catch the medical marijuana smoking people. No, I'm. I'm really just trying to keep people from being intoxicated and causing problems but out in the common area. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying. So, to talk about. so maybe we should. If everybody behaved, we wouldn't know that. No, right? And, and this won't even come into into play unless somebody's misbehaving. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's where we're going. So if so, say I have an altercation between two two residents, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, which we have. <laughs> oh, sure, ab absolutely. And then they go like this, and the cops come, mm -hmm. and the cops go, he's intoxicated, mm -hmm. she's intoxicated, whichever. Mm -hmm. um, this comes now this comes into play that's when it comes into play but or when i see a resident walking across or i should i say staggering across the parking lot mm -hmm. holding mm -hmm. a, a wine glass right, right that's when this comes into that's play. When other play. than that how about if, there's, if, it, if we're having a picnic outside or a cookout outside you can and have you that. have beer and wine you, you, can't, you can't even have that no you, so nobody here as an adult can have alcohol if they're at a party even we know we can't have it. So how many parties are we having? There are a bunch of little cookouts and parties that are okay. So hold place. on, hold right. on, hold on. This isn't an open discussion. We still have to go around to maintain decorum, and we're getting off track here. So, um, I think we need to. We got a lot more questions about this, but we could. I know, but you do, I don't. I know you don't. <laughs> you do, I don't. I know you don't. I have a question about the some of the language because I think it might cause us legal problems. Legal problems how? Because it says legal or illegal in or on common areas and it doesn't say uh, it, does, it, it says tenants shall not be in an intoxicated state, but it doesn't say this will only be enforced if the police say you're intoxicated. Do you, you see what I'm saying? We've got too many people taking medication that their doctors prescribe that... But, but, but we're truly not talking about prescription medication. But we're not saying that because we are saying legal or illegal. So right, we're saying legal because of marijuana being legal. Yeah. Other than that, anything But it doesn't it, say that. Then so we say including legal marijuana. But it's still not legal according to the federal government. It's only well, we're, we're we're a state, we are a state housing. So we right. that's where yeah. we kind of get our way around that. 
Uh, if this was federal housing, you yeah. would not be allowed at all. At all. So. Even with a medical marijuana card. No, it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you want to change that to um, any drug, um, including legal marijuana. You can't say, or any drug, including legal marijuana, because then you have... Right, but do you want me to list all the illicit drugs? No. I feel like, I, I almost, no. I don't mean to be a smart aleck, but I'm no. thinking of when John Quill came to my classroom when I was in grade school with the boxes, the, the, the pill boxes. No, no, no. Saying, these are all the, you know, don't, when somebody hands you PCP, don't do that, or, you know, it's Why just, don't we just come back to this at another time? Because we're, in time. because we're in June, and this is important. Okay. Because it's, it's already we're coming in the summer, so it's it's already, and it's already bad back. in the summertime. So, let, let me, let me, can we come back to the, let's get through everything else and come back to this, and that'll give me time to. Illicit drugs? Well, you can't. Illicit is too generic. You can't say illicit because that's that's a legal so term. It, it's not even a legal term. It's under inter illicit is under interpretation. Right. Right. Yeah. So any of this that is here would have to hold up in court. Exactly. So, right. But yeah. if, but I trust myself and my staff that we're not going to take grandma into court for taking Ritalin. Okay. What, and what I'm, what I'm saying is, it has to be specific. I think when you get to housing court on some of these things, it needs to be so specific that the judge says, yeah, this is a very clear policy. The, out, as it's written right now, I even have questions. You can't, you can't put every minute detail into a policy. No, you shouldn't. So, tenants shall not consume any beverage containing alcohol or use any uh you could say illegal drugs and then say uh, uh say or smoke or vape marijuana and that way you don't have to worry about the ritalin and gr grandma's ritalin okay or whatever you know because some of the drugs that people take, even innocuous stuff, can make them appear to be inebriated or, you know, and they're not. They're it's right, just that's not, that's not who we're worried about. I know, but it doesn't say that, and that's the problem. It doesn't say that. It, it, it needs to be so well defined that grandma and grandma's family know that grandma's not going to be targeted if she's staggering to the flagpole because she's on parkinson's medication do you see what i'm saying They're well, so, but, so then what would grandma be doing that the housing authority would then go up because the housing authority by i have trained staff i know no i know and i'm not casting aspersions on the staff the staff is brilliant i'm just saying there are okay i'm a nursing background i'm looking at this going there's all kinds of drugs that would cause grandma or a handicapped person to appear to be inebriated when they are in fact not right but the purpose of this mm -hmm. is to make sure that people are not drinking in, com in, in common areas right and not doing drugs in common areas and then are not coming into the housing authority driving their cars intoxicated into the housing yes. authority or under the influence of drugs we have had people that I know absolutely now, not you, grandma. Not are you even, talking yeah. about front porches? Yeah, yeah. also yeah. and back porch. I mean, yeah. stoops. That that's mm -hmm. that's, that's common areas. Areas. Those are common areas. That's, that's a tricky. tricky area. It's a tricky <laughs> area. It's very tricky. tricky and very wait because it. So part of part of me wants to say, oh yes, you can have a glass of wine on your front stoop or a beer or a beer. Sure, right. you can have an alcoholic beverage on your front stoop, but. We have so many people that have alcohol, alcoholism, which is now a disease, and I have folks in court that I'm now having to make mm -hmm. agreements and behavioral agreements mm -hmm. that it, it's it's triggering to other people mm -hmm. more than you know it's you know do you not have a wine glass do you use some I, I don't know it's just it's there's a there's a big problem in this community there is a way out but that to, I look all at, you know looking yeah, at a problem looking at something that. being obstructed or a problem with somebody 
you know, drinking outside their apartment. I think that's sort of black and white thinking. We have to look at more like shades of gray thinking, something in between the black and white. Okay. You know, that's so, what I'm talking about. There's too many things on here that are no, not shades of gray. It's black. Okay. White. I, I, I'm going to table this for now, and we'll come back to this pair, this uh, 4G in a few minutes. All right. So, Sue, do you have any other comments about any of the rest of this? Um, no. Other than majority of them I'm not thrilled about, and I'm not happy with it all. But, as I said, having three people on the board, and the fact that you two often 99% vote the same, I'm going to so, be out voting anyway. That, that's so very matter. disrespectful. I, but I mean, that's the way it is. It's the reality. It's, it, it's so okay, reality. that's very disrespectful. Right. Well, and you asked me what I thought, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. About the policy. Right. Do you have any other comments specific to this draft version? No, nothing more. Okay. Is there anything here that that um, I mean, we this policy defines what the common area is, which we really haven't ever had before, and we need to define it because legally and financially, the housing authority uh, has to have this the common area defined. So the this policy defines the common area and actually allows tenants to place a table and two chairs and a couple of pot of plants on the common area. So it, it actually allows tenants to do things that other um, housing authorities don't permit. Other housing authorities don't permit. I only care what's happening here, not other housing authorities. Uh, well, but I live here, and so do other people. I mean, so do you. So right, I'm but more you concerned about what's to, happening right here. I have to, and you have to. We're tenants on the board, right? But we have to set the tenant cap a hop aside. And even though we're both avid gardeners, we have to set that aside and look at what's the best interest of Hadley Housing Authority legally and financially. If you want to look at if you want to look at things only legally and financially, that's fine. It, it, that's the law right. for a commission. Oh, sure, but I mean, there's other there's, there's other nothing else legal. when you're sitting at this table. Is legal financial policies, which we're working on right now, and oversight of the ED. That's it. And you have to set your tenant hat aside and take yourself out of the equation. Yes. All right. Yourself as a tenant, because your responsibility as a commissioner is to the Hadley Housing Authority, not to how many potted plants and stuff you want to keep. No, not just me. I'm looking at it. It doesn't matter. I think it's Rich's turn. It's Rich's turn. <laughs> I'm good with the policy. Like we went through it. We started it. Yeah. And like this alcohol one, I'm, I'm, you got to go back to that one. Yeah. Um, I am going to call for a five-minute recess, Nick. Nick, I'm going to call for a five-minute recess um, because we've been going an hour and twenty minutes, and I can't last that long. Mm -hmm. You know. So, can we come back together in five minutes? Sure. And we are. If I didn't hear any other. Concerns about anything. We've deleted the word bird feeders on 4A because mm -hmm. we're addressing it later. And the only other, uh, I, I think that 4K and 4M are sufficiently clear. Pamela, what do you think about the the ramps and structural amenities? Yeah. Is that okay. Yes. Okay. So what I'm what I'm hearing, it, well, what I'm actually seeing, is that alcohol and drug use are a problem here. Uh, it, it's it's only really a few people, 
and it's um, it, it's not a large number of people, but there are a few people that have a, a disease, right? Um, and it does cause behavioral issues. I do have concerns about the specific language used, just specifically legal or illegal without defining what legal drugs are not allowed. Like if you put Uh, smoking or vaping marijuana in public, I think it would be more clear because you're not really talking about grandma's Ritalin, right? No, not at all. Not at all. So if we somehow were clearer, I think we can stop the smoking and the vaping of marijuana. Uh, that And it does. It bothers other tenants to smell it. It really does. Well, we have, we have not smoking. So it's, it's against the smoking policy. No, I'm talking about outside 20 feet away, because they're allowed to oh. smoke cigarettes 20, what, I thought it was 30 feet. feet. Whatever, was 25 yeah. feet. The original was 20, 25 feet. Somehow in the policy it got written down as 30, but I was part of all those, and it was supposed to be 20 or 25 feet. But it, it was supposed to be commensurate with the state law, which is either 20 or 25 feet, but somehow it got written down as 30 in the policy. So the the smoking anything causes problems with other tenants marijuana or tobacco or whatever it causes problems and what this is trying to focus on is people who are intoxicated and drinking uh, or taking drugs in the common areas which include port front porches and back porches so can any of um just to maybe yeah. discuss a revision. So if we go back to the where the tables and chairs are uh -huh. and just sort of clean that up, we're going to make them the same, but I would also move the M to L and L to M so that the, the okay. table areas are together and then we go to, to rocks. So that aside. And then with the alcohol use, um, then perhaps we change this because it, it, it is not in a, uh, a detention camp, no. <laughs> and and adults should should be able to regulate themselves, and some people can't. We understand that. Yeah. But perhaps we change the, the it to saying um, alcohol use is confined to the areas listed in K and M, uh, L. So it would be your stoop and your tables and your chairs. Oh, that and sense. then oh. and no tenant shall not be an intoxicated. So it's we're saying K, K and M, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to change the. Oh, we're, we're going to change so it's, okay. it. So it's going to be confined to your stoop and your chair and your table, um, and then and then at no time shall you be in an, an intoxicated state. So you drink, yeah. and you drink what you want to drink, but just don't get drunk yeah. and don't cause problems. Yeah, I think we have to include in this the people who have Thank you. who have signs on their door or windows that they're on oxygen, but they're still smoking because the chances of the apartment exploding is uh, very no. It's well, not. they they shouldn't be smoking if they're smoking yeah. in their apartment. That we should well, be advising people that. visiting or, or, smoke, or no, smoking. Right. Yeah, so this is a big. You're worried about you know. Okay. Worst case scenario. Okay. That's a big. Okay. That's a big. Worst case that, scenario. But, but that would be a violation of the non-smoking policy. Yeah. Because they shouldn't be smoking there. We ever. are. But you. But you're talking about smoking and alcohol. Sue. Sue. Right. Can we limit, please? To what we're dealing with but right to me now. i'm looking at it as something that's okay but right now we're looking at number g right let's stick with number g okay. pamela you you were in the middle so so tenants may consume beverages containing alcohol conf, um, limited to the what well, areas are, are we getting rid of drug use not yet no okay uh limited to let's make it soon beverages oh, oh, let, let, uh, pamela was speaking right now just i'm just talking for seconds outlined <laughs> in k and m oh it's actually going to be k and m 
because we're going to move. Okay, you're going to move whatever. Okay. okay. Uh, Ten shall not be in intoxicated state in uh, in or on common areas. Of That's the perfect. Asia at any time. That's perfect. And again, it's oh, so. When somebody calls and says there's a problem, that's when we, we we'll yeah there's a problem, and then um, cause that's really what we want to do is stop people wandering around intoxicated, right? Well, the other thing too, I I guess so now that I've argued enough about it, maybe just take out the drug use because. If somebody is smoking legal marijuana, or unless you want to get rid of legal marijuana smoking, but if they're doing illegal drugs, that then the police would arrest them for doing illegal anyway, drugs, and then that's yeah. a, that falls under somewhere else. Yes. So yes. I don't need to regulate. We that don't. Here. We don't have to regulate because yeah. So do you want to talk about smoking marijuana or no? I think it's covered under the smoking policy. Okay. Yeah, and that's and and the people that are. Smoking marijuana are adhering to that. They that are. I, that I'm aware of. They, that I'm aware of. I mean, like I said, we're always going to get, and I cannot tolerate marijuana smoke personally. And I, every once in a while, waft, is, is smell it wafting, you know, in the air. But <coughs> I also realize that most everybody here that smokes marijuana has a medical reason for doing it. Um, and okay, so uh, uh, alcohol use tenants may consume beverages containing alcohol limited to the areas outlined in K and L. Um, tenants may not be in an intoxicated state in or on common areas on common areas of the LHA at any time. Tenants use of alcohol. In other or in other common areas, this is not their com this is not their space. Yeah. Well, is is prohib is prohibited. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so when the tenant is walking across the street, staggering with their wine glass, that's the problem. That's the problem. Okay. And or when they when they get into the the other thing I see is a gaggle of people, a gaggle of people drinking, drinking on a wall. Yeah, you That's, can't. You can't do that. You can't. That I think that just needs a keg at that point. Well, <laughs> it's it's that it, it's not so much that they're sitting there drinking. It's the behavior that happens following it. Okay. Right. Right. It's different. multiple problems here because of drinking. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's really not cool. down on our end. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's actually, actually, <laughs> no. actually, actually, that's not true. Really, that's not true. Really, because I never see any. Yeah, any and there's yeah. Yeah. And drinking. Yeah. and it just disturbs Sorry. everybody's quiet enjoyment. So it if, if there's a couple of neighbors yeah. sitting around having a barbecue and having some beer and wine, and and they're fine, no harm, no foul. Everybody. Yeah. Um, but when it starts getting rowdy, or and they disturb the peace, or they start heckling people going by, then that's a you know what you just reminded me, and it, you said barbecue. We need to address the outdoor grill thing because there we've got some weird stuff about outdoor grill in the policies and procedures. We need to to incorporate that in there. That is, Pam, is that a separate policy somewhere? I think yeah. it is. I think it is, I'd have to double check. So we could always add that. We can add it, yeah. To this, or reference it. Mm -hmm. And then, she, again, they're not, you know, they're always up for revision. Always, yeah. So, oh, speaking of trouble. <laughs> Come on in, we're having a board meeting, but I'd love to. Are you? This is Michael from TPP, Tenant <laughs> Preservation Program. Program. Come on in and have a seat. We're wow, this was scary. Board. I was actually stopping by just to say hi, too. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping up, I think. So. Wow, this is a board meeting, huh? Yeah, yeah. We were actually, we were just talking about, so Michael helps us with these things. Have, um, have a seat right here. <laughs> you know, he's like, I Look, he's running through the but here's the topic of double run. <laughs> No, really, let's ask. Well, it's, it's a common space. It's a common space um, 
policy that we're working on. Thank you. Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't think I've noticed that, and I've only been here like 25 times. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We have to have so a vote. Skipper door is it a, okay, so we have to have a vote. Is it a, uh, I move that we allow, tell me your name? Michael Richel. Say it again. Michael Richel. I'm not going to try to pronounce that last <laughs> but, but anyway, that we allow him to speak at the board meeting. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Fine. Okay, pass three to zero. Okay. The floor is yours, sir. Awesome. So what I do is I help preserve tenancies. I work with you guys and all the property managers to help solve whatever problems may be causing a tenancy. Mm -hmm. And it also works the other way around as well if it's unsolvable. I also report that as I'm a neutral third party to every mm -hmm. case. Yeah. So. But Michael has um, a ton of resources, a ton of knowledge. Um, he's helped several of our tenants here in Hadley. Yeah. Uh, both preserve their tenancy. Um, he assisted us moving a very needy family from Hadley mm -hmm. into Amherst for various reasons. Um, very Better good. services. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so is it okay if I, if we can go through, the, because he might have some really good things to say. Well, I wouldn't go through the whole policy. No, no, <laughs> I think the one where we're really, we're, that we're, we've just yeah. kind of re, retweet is, um, in the common area, is the use of alcohol in common areas. Oh. And the problems that it causes. Mm -hmm. Initially, we had it written that there'd be no alcohol use. Um, we have two ten members, uh, two tenants on the board, um, and we're all adults. We all like an occasional glass of not me. I hate the stuff. Well, I mean, huh? Beer and that's uh, no. uh -uh. mm -hmm. So you you want to allow alcohol? So beer? now we're saying you can have it on your like on your stoop or oh. at your table, but at no time can you be in an intoxicated state. Okay, and, so I'm hoping that that would keep people from yeah. Yeah, so you know, sit outside, having a little drink, and then going back inside. Right, and you know, not but yelling not, at your neighbor, but, or right, causing not, problems. So I actually ran into this with a young lady. I say young, but she's like ninety years old. <laughs> um, so just to play, just to show you the other side of things, they allowed people to, and this is Holyoke housing, um, drink outside, and this young lady happens to be an alcoholic and I've worked with her and she's been really, really good ever since, but her and three of her friends would go out there and basically try to molest all the males that walks by. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like that. I'm, I'm not talking like, hey cutie, I'm... <laughs> so since then, they still allow it, but now it's it's written like that where you can't be in an intoxicated state outside of your unit, you know? And it seems to be working. I was like, listen, if you and your girls want to go have a toddy downstairs, by all means. But the minute it turns into three or four, now you need to take it back to your apartment and plant your butt on your couch and drink your, she drinks 40s at 90 years old. So. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know how a liver's function. Talking from a nursing background, I don't know how that's happening, but so maybe we, you know, you can, we have to define common area. It's yeah. anything outside your apartment, but we're considering saying you can sit at the table in two chairs we allow you to have right. on your front and back porch uh, to, that you can, you know, have your whatever you call it, highball or alcohol yeah. beverage or whatever, sitting out there. But you can't walk with that whatever bottle of beer across the parking lot right. or on your front lawn. You can't sit out on your front lawn throwing them back. Right. How do you feel about having a cookout or a picnic where people have alcohol at the picnic? Like a keg or their own beer? Or, because to me, it's normal. They've done it here, honey. And I'm sorry. Not having it after, you know, I think yeah, that yeah. is very important. So my opinion on that would be like, get permission and let people know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you have a problematic tenant that decides to have a barbecue, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have anything to do with like the property, you're not doing like a common property place. Mm -hmm. So I live here. 
and I want to have a bunch of friends over and have a keg outside. That, I don't see anything good coming from that. You know what I mean? But now say you're having like a localized barbecue and there happens to be people with coolers drinking beers, that might be one thing, but that's like, that could be a permission based way of doing it. You know, it's like, hey, just let the office know, see what everybody thinks. Like rent the community room or rent the, or, there's, yeah, there's no alcohol, alcohol in the community. No alcohol. Yeah, I was, I was, but what about out there or something like that? Or no, no alcohol. Yeah, because then you're taking the responsibility right, yeah, yeah, right. of that, keeping it at their at their units and making that stoop part part of their space. You know that takes you and your stuff out. But hold on, the way we have this written now, uh, say I would never. But say I was sitting out there, I invited a couple of friends over, somebody grabbed a chair from their place and we're sitting on the front or the back porch and we're knocking them down. Well, sometimes it's just sipped, just so you know. Okay, I mean, she's <laughs> always knocking <laughs> them down. I don't <laughs> drink at all. all. Doesn't drink <laughs> there. But anyway, I'm just using the part lot I've heard in my yeah. music. Yeah. So, so I'm sitting there, I'm allowed to do that, yes. but my two neighbors aren't. Because no, 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 you, you're, they're your guests. They're right oh, in their okay. space. Yeah, and as in Sue's saying about a, a like a little party or a barbecue, barbecue in the back of you, you're you're allowed that in that in that space. Right. I mean, no one's going to come over and say to you, "You stepped twelve inches yes, over the line." No, we won't. What, what yeah, are you might not, but somebody will. <laughs> no, when you when you start yelling at your neighbor or causing right. problems, right. and the police come, <laughs> that's, that's when it's that's a problem. the issue. That's yeah. the problem. You know, this so. says. Have fun, have a nice barbecue, but be an adult and control yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think the, talking about policies, I think we always look at the worst case scenario, like she said, legally and financially, because we're tenants, but we're also on the board. But then I said there has you to be. All tenants but there also yeah. has to. I'm a tenant. Sue's a tenant. tenant. Rich is not a tenant. Oh. So I agree that because yeah. of the fact we're on the board, but we're also a tenant. But then you have to look at things legally and financially. But I said you also have to look at things in a humanistic way right. too. We I find that a lot of policies, especially since this is the first policy we're sitting and doing, I feel I find that it's too long, that it's too restrictive, and that it's not something that makes life in a senior and disabled housing enjoyable at all. Now, I'm not saying that there's none of it. Okay, I mean, so, I, right. Okay. Yes, if I could just correct you, this is not the first policy we've done. No, I'm talking about right. sitting. Okay. 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 Right, but if you look at our language policy, our fair housing policy, mm -hmm. our reasonable accommodation policy. That was already policy. written by the state. No, and it, it, just and their of, pages. Right, their pages. pages and pages. Policies, uh, I mean. I'm talking about the first time we've sat down. No, no, so. Yeah. Well, I've never worked on this. Right, because you've only been on the board a year. Well, right. I think that's a long time to not see a policy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, see it draft. We're, we're going, going on, on 12th. Yeah, right. we are going to, I am going to uh, say um, I would like a motion to, uh, to vote on this policy. Uh, with the modifications mm -hmm. that Pamela has suggested, knowing that a policy is a living document and can be revised if needs be, right. we will get uh, feedback, we'll get legal feedback eventually from housing court about anything, you know. Yeah, if it gets, if, if, if we it ever gets to housing court, yeah. yeah. but we will. You That's know, like worst case scenario right yeah, there. That, 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, but what I'm saying yeah. is, we have an attorney, and we will be getting feedback from tenants who've already overwhelmingly approved this one anyway. Yeah. When the, awesome. we had the tenant meeting, they loved it. They especially loved uh, that it requires the housing authority to act. Mm. What, that's not what we had before. It was just a, tenants have to do this, but there wasn't any rationale behind it you know, on most of our policies. And this requires the housing authority to do something within three business days to remove obstructions and prevent falls and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so I digress. So I would like a, a motion to uh, vote on this pol uh, uh, policy as modified uh, by um, uh, Pamela in the board 
and the board yeah. with all the the changes we've incorporated and you've got all your notes there mm -hmm. right yes ma'am so i will I'll ask for a I'll second Can we accept? okay and sue would you like to second no okay no. i'll second and then i'll call for the vote approve and no. are you voting i'm voting no. okay so it passes two to one with sue as the dissenting vote So Reese, I will make the revisions and get it over to you for your signature. Okay, wonderful. But we'll do it as of today. Um, so now, board correspondence. I only have, ooh, I think it's one thing. Um, I did receive, uh, I think it was this morning or yesterday morning. After all this, like we're going on an hour and 40 minutes here. Um, so I received some information that we will likely be having an uh, applicant uh, for a vacant commissioner spot mm -hmm. uh, uh, probably pretty soon. I mean, of course, we have no control over that. That's someone in the town is interested in serving on this board of commissioners and they make an application to the select board who then notifies us and then we go uh, Pamela and whoever wants to from the Board of Commissioners to the select board meeting the select board interviews this candidate it will be for a one year the first year of a five-year term and then next spring uh, they will have to run for the four year of that, the remaining four years of that particular seat um, next month. So it's for a one year appointment by the select board. The board of commissioners will have uh, parity votes with the select board is how my understanding of, of how it works. So we await to see if an application is indeed made and will be contacted by the chair of the select board okay so that's a happy news mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is uh, regarding uh, our former chair David Moskin I it, it, he sent an email this morning that he couldn't attend today that's three board meetings he has missed he has not yet made the decision whether to remain as the um, and he just notified me this morning so he has not made the decision yet whether or not he will continue or or ask to be reappointed as the governor's appointee so he needs to decide whether or not to formally resign which then frees up the spot for someone else or agree to another period of time but he has to make application with the governor and that's a new thing that Governor Healy is doing now is if you want to be a governor's appointee there's a whole application process <coughs> we still await he, he is kept as um, according to state law he is a holdover he just hasn't attended the past three meetings or he left after three minutes of the one on April 9th so we're, we're still waiting to hear about that that's all I have for board correspondence for commissioners discussion I think that's all I have for board correspondence. yeah okay so for commissioners discussion our next meeting date is scheduled for June 25th at 11 a.m. I am proposing that we go ahead and schedule for for planning purposes uh, July Tuesday July 20, 30th 2024 at 11 a.m. Uh, is that okay with you all I can't do it right now. <laughs> we don't even July. live in Hadley. We can't serve. Okay. Wait, when is it July? July 30th, 30th. 30th at 11 a.m. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Do we have dates for annual plan presentation? We do. Oh, okay. So I think that's the 25th, June 25th. Right, Pam? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's when we're already There's scheduled for a board meeting. Yeah. Right, right. You, right. It's part of the board meeting. It's Wonderful. Board meeting. Two birds, one stone. I love that. Go to the bird feeder. And the tenant, the tenant, um, 
the tenant meeting I saw is scheduled for this Friday. At that's, a different, different, that's a different meeting. But it's not It's not about talking about capital improvements and stuff? It's just a tenant chat. Okay, it's a tenant chat. Okay. So we done with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, 5B is whether to change meeting format from in-person to either live video or hybrid. So we had talked about we, we need to do this for because the feedback from the people that might be interested were they cannot come to in-person meetings. So we neither need to either do live video, which would be a Tuesday, or we need to do a hybrid. So people who want to come can. And uh, so I'll start at the left. Sue, your comments? I'd be interested in hybrid. Oh, wait a minute, I have to make a motion. We'll make the motion, we do a hybrid. Hybrid? Hybrid. You want to second that motion? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? Nothing? Nothing. Wait, what? Nope, I'm why, why are we doing hybrid? I, I prefer video, just live video and not the hybrid because it's a lot of trouble to do hybrid meetings. It's just a huge amount of trouble. Well, you have your right to, to come so in person then. I understand that. Right. So what? why is it on the, on the agenda then? It's on the agenda because the feedback I got from people who might be interested serving on the board is they cannot leave work to come to an in-person meeting, but they can get an hour or so off, you know, so that they can do a meeting well, you know, on video. So we, so I have, in Amherst, we have a, um, a commissioner who oftentimes needs mm -hmm. um, that, mm -hmm. but what we do is we just send them an invitation. So we send okay. the rest of the board meets and then that, per so I don't think we have to go to live and then I believe this is live, right? No. No, it's, so it's, people can watch this way too, but. but so can we do that like, if it were if we have in-person meetings but one person needs to appear by video so yeah Zoom, Zoom teams yeah. Can, can we do i mean how are we going to see them on a screen and interact with them well, we have the screen but we, that would be just for the commissioner i i don't i would recommend that we don't open it up to the public the the, the, Zoom, the Zoom. Yeah. okay um yeah. and then we just okay but will that person's face appear on that the video feed and not unless we set up a screen, but it doesn't have to. I mean, you hear the person. Most likely people are going to attend in person unless there's another epidemic. Well, as I said, we are 330% increase in COVID virus in wastewater okay. right now. Well, if, but if we get to that point, we can go back to hybrid. We, we are, are at that point. No, if we, if we get to the point where people are we can go back to hybrid but it's okay. it is extra work at this point it is it's is, a lot of extra work doing hybrid. right and out of the three housing authorities you you are the only one that has the, t the public I know, access right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay so if a if a commissioner is sick or cannot leave work to attend they can appear via fee mm -hmm. Does that work for you, Nick? I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm putting employee. you on the spot. I'm just an employee, so um, I mean, yeah, I guess whatever will go. We'll go with whatever. Yeah. Okay. So i uh, So can you remake the motion to say we are in-person meetings with video feed accommodation for people unable to attend for uh, commissioners <laughs> unable to attend? You just said it. Okay, I'll make no, that motion. No. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Okay, vote? Yes. Okay, three to zero. Items for future agenda. Uh, Sue, you had two things. One was you want an explanation in detail of the administrative fee. No, it, it's new. I mean, according no, no, to- No, 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 it's not new. No, according to the reading through the notes here, it okay, talked about- Okay, Sue. Did you say you want an explanation yes. of the administrative fee? I gave an explanation. I know. It's no, in the, it's not in the, the fee itself, about the fact that it's new, and this is the first time you're partaking of it. No, because it's, it's in the minutes. It's, no, what, what, what was new was the request. This could have gone under um, Commissioner's Court, I think. Mm -hmm. What was new is that 
it's getting board approval. So that's been in place actually since. Oh, see, reading through these minutes, I, it didn't say just but the it, board. That's right, but the board minutes are in, in Hadley are a transcript mm -hmm. verbatim. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that may be confusing. So it's it's since COVID they they're requiring board vote and that's new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but the but administrative the fee has always been there. Always been there. Because otherwise, and this is what I said before, why ever would a housing authority take on that enormity of a capital project unless they got some money to recoup their losses and expenditures? Do you, in time. Yeah, it just it helps soften the blow of it helps all that extra blow. work. <laughs> yeah, and we use it for the good of the housing authority. Yeah. Does that make sense? Do we need to again include this? No, I'm just okay. going through it and the way okay. it's written. It's um, well, it's not the way it's written. It's, it's different. It's a transcript. It's a good transcript. Not every part. I mean, ninety-nine percent. But there's some areas that isn't this part exactly. And, and what was the other item? The other um, item was a question about. Uh, my um, board correspondence of last meeting April 30th where I mentioned that you and I were going to housing and economic development to give a presentation about pathways for creating more housing. Uh, Pamela didn't end up going. She had another obligation. So I went and just gave a brief thumbnail of some of the pathways for creating more housing. But is this part of you being on the CPA no. committee? This is above and beyond. It's not CPA. above and beyond or any. It has nothing to do with CPA. It has to do with public housing administrative notices coming out of EOHLC and HUD. Okay? And it doesn't affect us yet, although hopefully as things progress, we'll be able to look into it, but it's very early stages in this state. You you'll keep us apprised of what happens. Honey, have you ever seen me not keep you apprised? <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now we're um, through items for future agenda. Unless, Rich, do you have any items for future agenda? No, I don't. Uh, we have, well, we do have a member of the public. Do you have any comments, sir? No, ma'am. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? And no, you? no, no, no. <laughs> Why? I just can't. Want, no. The fact that he helped tense, I just wanted he, to know. He already said what he was from, and we need to get out See, of they're already knowing me because I'm asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> so he already said, to, uh, just say the organization you're from. Uh, Berkshire County Regional Housing Authority. There you go. Done. All right. So we have no members of the public other than our wonderful guest. Um, and so do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. No, to no. <laughs> do I have a second, Miss Sue? <laughs> yes. Do I have a second? Sure. You have a second. Okay. Call for the vote. Let's get out of here.